The sound of the city. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10 a.m. with Adrian Kennedy. I'm Adrian Kennedy, and that is our esteemed producer, Mr. Jeremy Dixon. How are you? Everything okay? Good, good. Did you hear that story uh, in the news today about driving tests and the fact that 20% of people who get a date and a time for their driving test just don't bother their arse showing yeah, well, they could be sick, Adrian. Um, 20%, there's really? Lots, there's, lot, there's lots of reasons why people don't turn up. I mean... The, the, re- the reason this is annoying yes. is that the waiting list for driving tests is so long. Yeah. Uh, you can, uh, it's been anticipated or uh, suggested that within a year you could be waiting up to a year to get your driving test. But you test. don't know why people don't turn up at things. I mean, say for instance, there could be a, an example. Let's take this for an example yeah, where well, a, yeah. a woman has her dog booked in to, to get the dog groomed. Yeah. Into a dog groomers, yeah? yeah? Yeah, And she doesn't turn up or she turns up two, late, two hours late for the dog groomers. Yeah. You don't know the reasons why she's late for the, the dog groomers. The neck of you saying that. But you don't know. You don't know the reasons. The neck of you saying that. Why, did I say something out of, uh, out of place? All I'm saying is you don't know why people don't turn up for appointments. I agree, it's annoying if you don't turn up for appointment. But I could have my dog booked in for the groomers tomorrow afternoon for three o'clock. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I'm going to bring me little pouch or pooch, pooch whatever it yeah, is. Pooch, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to bring me little pooch uh, along to the dog groomers at three o'clock. Yeah. And I get delayed for whatever reason. And I don't arrive to the dog groomers until five o'clock. The neck of you! I'm not saying I did. I'm saying supposing I... Who knows the reasons? No. No, really? seriously. Um, somebody just messaged in about that news story saying, uh, I wonder why people don't show up for their tests. Of course, you don't need a license in this country to drive. Change that and everybody will show up. It's a silly system. In other words, we still, uh, now I know the laws are getting tougher on unaccompanied drivers and everything else, but you can still drive a car uh, on a learner's permit um, for a long, long time. A ridiculous situation. It is. I've never understood how you can fail a driving test and then hop into your car and drive you off. You shouldn't be able to. Yeah, would you anyway. get into a plane that was flown by a pilot who didn't pass his uh, pilot Absolutely test? Absolutely not. No, there's two people I won't get into a plane in if they're flying, yeah? Yeah. Um, pilots who haven't passed their, their, their test. Well, obviously, they're not going to be flying the plane. And, and women pilots. Really? Oh, yeah, I'm a bit weird about that. I think most people are. Yeah. How bit. misogynistic of no, you? No, that's not misogynistic. Yeah, I, it absolutely is. No, it's not. I never feel as... I, I don't know why, but I, when the, the plane takes off yeah. and the voice comes on and it says, this is your captain and it's a female voice, I don't feel the same way. Sorry? I'm sorry, that is misogynistic. No, it's, how is it, it misogynistic? It absolutely is. It's, it's actually not. Why would you judge her flying ability based on the fact that she's a woman? Because I take it if they're no good on the road, they ain't going to be any good in the sky. Yeah. Okay, okay. If the, the 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 miracle on the Hudson, yeah. Yeah. Sully, remember Sully I landed do, the plane. I do. Amazing job. Yeah. Had that been a female pilot, do you think the plane would have landed on the water? I'm just I'm just asking. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Mm, I'm not getting involved because I think you're being uh, extreme. No, I think you're being to be controversial. Extremely misogynistic, Mr. Dixon. Oh, no, I'm just saying. Do you, do you feel? Do you not feel more comfortable when it's a male pilot? No, not particularly. No. no do you not worry that when the plane is landing, she might be doing her mascara or something? No, not particularly. Oh, just well, me then. Yeah, would appear just so. Just me, who's the sexist person? Uh, what's happening, Adrian? In okay, the um, you you wanted to talk about Aunt MacPartlin and his uh, hundred thousand euro fine yesterday, or eighty six thousand <laughs> pounds. Sorry, sorry, just <laughs> what text message there. When I was saying, if you can't trust a woman to drive a car on the road, you can't trust her to fly a car. And somebody texts in to say there are no sidewalks in the sky. Sorry, who, unless you're American, that person, we don't use the word sidewalk here. I call it a sidewalk. You do not. Yes, I do. What, there's a sidewalk outside our office here? Yes, you there is. You real. Yes, there is. We don't call it a sidewalk. You we call can it call it, it whatever you want. No, you call it a footpath. Uh, anyway, sorry, yes, Aunt McParkland yesterday. Um, come on, give me the details of what happened to him. Well, he was in... Uh, this is a story that a lot of you have been following over the last uh, over the last couple of uh, weeks. And um, it's... Div- like a lot of stories in the news lately, it's divided opinion, hasn't it? Because a lot of people are saying, uh, well, Ant, God love him, you don't know what's going on in his life. Well, he stood outside the court yesterday and um, looking at the photographs on the television, he looked like a broken man. He, he does did. look like a broken man, yeah. He, he, there was pain on his, fa- yep. on his face. He looked like he hadn't slept in months. He looks like he's, he's suffering inside. He has his own demons. Um, but he was fine, the equivalent... Of one hundred thousand euro yesterday uh, for that uh, alcohol-fueled car crash 
that took place last month. Uh, the TV presenter, 42, uh, was fined €100,000, uh, which is believed to be a record for a drink driving offence. And he stood outside the court, and you have the audio, Adrian. Of Here's what, what he, he said. said outside the court yesterday. I just want to say I'm truly sorry for what happened. Um, higher standards are expected of me. I expect them of myself. I let myself down. I let a lot of people down. For that, I'm truly sorry. I'd like to apologise to everybody involved in the crash. And I'm just thank- thankful nobody was seriously hurt. Thank you very much. Okay, now I uh, watched that yesterday afternoon. And I have to say, I felt terribly sorry for the guy. I really did. Now, I know what he did was wrong. Mm. I know uh, he has been punished. He's gotten a 20-month driving ban, and he uh, was fined the equivalent of €100,000. It's not a punishment. Neither neither of those are punishments. Say, what do you want? You want him locked away? Okay, first of all, uh, the driving ban isn't a punishment. He lives in London. Um, yeah. And he works in London Nobody drives in London And works in London anyway you well, use, What did you, you want? You use the tube So the, the driving ban Ain't going to affect him That man has enough money To, to hire a chauffeur To drive him around Yeah uh, Secondly the one Sorry, hun- I know I know people here Who actually got driven around After uh, being banned from driving But go on anyway What does that got to do Andy? What are you talking about? His, his wealth has nothing to do with well, it It actually does It's a lot easier to get over A drinking ban if you have uh, Or a driving well, what ban What did you want then? Uh, the one hundred thousand euro fine that uh, that McPartland was was handed down uh, yesterday, while a lot of people are saying it's steep. Let's put this into perspective, okay? Mm. One hundred thousand euro is about the equivalent of half his week's wages. He will not even notice that one hundred thousand gone. Um, it's a drop in the ocean. The man earns one hundred and fifty grand a week. Yeah, it's pretty much half a week's wages. God, talk about green envy, for God's sake. The no, man, the man earns uh, a lot of money because he's been very successful in his career. I'm not to, Don't uh, begrudge him that. I'm not begrudging him the money, but I'm saying is, let's put Okay, some... so he got a hundred grand fine, he uh, got a 20-month driving ban, what did you want? I think maybe he should have done, I, I would have thought he would have got a, a suspended sentence, or custodial sentence. Really, for first offence? Well, he was involved, Adrian. He was involved in a, in a crash. I know he was involved in a crash, and uh, he knows he was involved in a crash. The judge knows he was involved in a crash, but he'd never done anything like this before. Uh, he was, I mean, you heard his, I, I don't know if you saw the video of him outside the court. That looked like a heartfelt apology to me. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not denying that. It was a heartfelt apology, but sometimes apologies just aren't enough. You know, there's this whole thing, and you, you were all morning in the office, Adrian, before, uh, early, earlier on in the yeah, office, yeah. yeah. You were all like, oh, you don't know what demons he has in his head. And yep. I, I don't give a fiddlers what demons he has in his head. We all have demons in our head. We've all had a, a you know, we've all had uh, tough times Can in I our life. Can I just tell you, you've, you've never been through as tough a time as that guy's gone through in the know. last few months. I know, I've known you, you 25 know what years. I, you don't know what I go through on a daily basis. You don't know anything about my life. Yeah. Right, whatever. Oh, you do? I know you're not going through the sort of shit he is. Okay? I know you're not. Um, I, Adrian, hang on a second. I could be going through a marriage breakup at the moment and you wouldn't know about it. No, but I know you're not. How do you know I'm I not? I just know you're not. Okay. Um, I'll take some calls on that in a second. Call us on 67979811. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. Um, what I'm arguing is I believe he got a fair uh, punishment. He got a 20-month driving ban. He got a €100,000 fine. The biggest, by the way, in UK history. But it's half a week's wages. And now, what Adrian is basically saying is, uh, you can skirt around the issue, but what Adrian is basically saying is, and I'll, I'll, I'll break this down for you, ladies and gentlemen, is that because Adrian likes him on I'm celebrity get me out no, of here uh, no he's a lovely fella no. shh, shh, shh. he's a lovely fella stupid comment that's a ridiculous no, comment no it's not no you're, I'm looking at the guy sorry you're a huge fan I am of his on the telly at, I am looking at a guy who has disintegrated over the last uh, year who has literally gone downhill through um, he's dealing with emotional issues yeah, so let's just he let got him drink addicted. hang on let's, let's. no I didn't say let him don't put words in my mouth I never said that I said this is a guy who has gone downhill over the last uh, year you can see it you can see the pain in the guy's face give him a bloody break and let him try and rebuild his life and, uh, if he does it again, throw the book at him. Ah, okay, second chance. Okay, okay. And, 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 and on another note, and on a final note, what I find disgusting as well is the reaction towards the family uh, who he crashed into, the Van Vanus, I think they're called. And um, this was a family uh, that uh, were in the car that he crashed into, 
and the racism online about yeah, this family. Yeah, but no, let's no but I'm just... Well, yeah. Let's go down the road. Let's go down the road because people are being racist about this family because they are of Indian or Pakistani descent and uh, people are saying, oh, oh, typical brown-skinned people always that, looking for money. For always that's looking for money. For disgusting. Seriously. Yeah, it is disgusting. Um, but, but Ant is great on the telly, so let's just... I de- when did I ever say that? I know you're a huge I, fan at of At one his. stage during our, our conversation t- uh, in the office today did I say that. But no, I, know I, you, I know you're a huge fan. Um, Sorry, no. by the way, if it was Donald Trump that was involved in the Sorry, crash... I'm looking at the guy is a bloody human being okay if it was Donald Trump I have a heart um, I'll come back to that in a second Jane you're on 98 FM let's go back to the driving test for a second uh, we were talking about the fact that 20% of people don't bother their arse turning up for their driving test um, you think it's a scam the driving test yeah why because like it's just a money making thing like a lot of people do turn up and a lot of people don't now the people that don't I don't know why because it's it's fifty five euro. Yeah. To book the test in the first place, and if you don't turn up, you don't get the money back. No, I know so. that. I, do, I can't get my head around the fact that twenty percent of people pay for the driving test and then just don't bother turning up. I, yeah, but I, you do. You don't know what they have going on in their life. Yeah, exactly. You and don't. you know what? Some, but you know what happens to me one time. I went to do my. I done my driving test four times, by the way, and I swear, on the time I passed my driving test, I actually thought I done better the second time compared to the fourth time. Right. But I paid for it five times because this, one of the other times I paid for it, I got there and my licence was three days out of date and they wouldn't let me sit it. Well, so uh, 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 you see, uh, 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 Jane, the only people who ever say that the driving test is a scam are people, are who, bad, fa- bad drivers. Are people who fail their driving test. You, yeah. ask somebody, well, you ask somebody who passed their driving test first go, they're not going to say it's a scam. Me, they think it's great. Adrian, me, yeah, pick me, too. pick me, pick me. Me too. Me. Me too. First time pass. Yeah, so did I. Um... Yeah, but that was back years ago when they were just handing out the passes. Well, no, in fairness, Adrian's, Adrian did his driving test in the, in the Model T Ford. I didn't do it. Yes, you yeah, actually Yeah, back then you could have just walked in without a license. Yeah, the maximum speed limit on the car that Adrian did his driving test on was 5 mph. Yes, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, and, you, and I find, like, it's... Some of the young drivers these days are better than drivers in their 40s and 50s. Ah, now relax there, GC. Jane, I was on your side to a point, but now you're... Now I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I'm not saying that in a bad way. And it's the boy racers as well that are shooting up insurance prices yeah. for... Um, um, for young drivers like there but, used to uh, be an insurance company for women and it got done away with because of like okay Jane can I, can I, can I, well, because yeah, well, yeah. And, and, and rightly so Jane by the way that was but they still should have an insurance company for women well there is an insurance mostly. company called just for women or it's for women or whatever yeah, it's I, called I don't know but, they, but uh, they have to insure men as well uh, and they have to quote yeah. the exact same but as, as men for the test I think it's ridiculous because it's uh. too expensive first of all and sometimes they, like, each instructor is to their own. Like, the yeah. last time, the time I passed it, she said I went too slow, but she still passed me. I know, but Jane, I think, I think with the greatest respect, I think you take, need to take a long, hard look at yourself and realise that you, maybe you are not the, the good driver that you think you are. And I understand nobody... No, wa- I think I am, because I've done uh, the test more times and I had to practice and practice and practice. And I got so used to doing all the good things, like constantly looking at my side mirrors, um, you know, doing all them kind of things that them, um, them, they're brainwashed into me now. Like I am, I'm a better driver. But, but the Jane, nobody. It, there's two things that people won't admit to being bad at in this world. One is making love. Okay, you will never hear somebody on the radio saying <laughs> no, but it's true. You'll never hear somebody on the radio. I'm not going to say on. I know I'm a, a bad lover. Okay. Yeah. But you, will, <laughs> you, will, my wife tells me enough times uh, that I'm a, a selfish lover. But it's very hard to get somebody to admit that they are a bad lover, and it's impossible to, to get, get somebody to. to to admit they're a bad, bad driver, driver. Yeah, people yeah. just yeah, don't well, want to admit it. I think it. everybody has their bad habits, though. Everybody has their bad habits when it comes to driving. Not even bad habits, but they have their own habits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, someone we know, Jane. Uh, someone we know quite well, myself and Adrian know, um, steers the car with their with their knees when they're driving. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Should we name, Sharon, name and shame? Yeah, Katie. She just said, "I don't care if you name me. I don't care." That's she what actually she just said, said in my ears, I yeah. was giving her, I was giving her anonymity there, Adrian. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just no, she just said in my ears, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't care if you name me. Is that the what, what voice did she say? I don't care if you name me. I don't care if you name me. Anyway, Sharon, um, why do twenty percent of people not turn up for their driving test? Hi, yeah, I think it's because when they apply to renew their provisional, you're not allowed to actually get it without a test date. That's right. So I think yes. What people are doing is they're literally just booking in in order to get a provisional then they don't really care whether they do the test or not because they have their provisional down for another year. So I think that's the problem that mainly so many people are doing because they're literally only doing it just to get another provisional for another year. 
Yeah, that's interesting, actually. Yeah, and I think you could have a point there. But why would you want? Why would you not want a full license when there's all sorts of restrictions on you on a on a learner's permit? I don't get that. You know, I know, yeah. I know it hasn't been heavily enforced about having a, um, a qualified driver with you, but it is going to be, and it is getting yeah. worse. It is getting more difficult for uh, people on learner permits to drive alone. Are you are you a bad driver, yeah. Sharon? No, no, I've my oh. full license now. But like that, I've done four tests as well. Like I won't, I won't deny it. Like it was, you know, it took me four times to actually do it. But nowadays, what I think it should be that the instructor should actually be able to pass you. Because they're doing that theory test now, they're going out to do so many hours with an instructor in a car. So I think maybe, you know, if they brought in a new thing where the instructor, once they see that they're fully competent on the road, they should be able to issue them with their full license. And I think that would get rid of the backlog and get rid of all the issues that surround going down. Because people get nervous. I did. I went down, I went to pieces. Yeah, like but you see, Sh Sharon, Sharon, someone who's nervous, I don't want someone who's nervous on the road beside me. Yeah, no, 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 some people get nervous doing a no, test. No, I think There's a big difference. A test, like you have it's a stranger sitting yeah. in the car beside yeah. you, and it's, it's like the whole like experience of it, whereas if you're in with your instructor, you're at ease with him, you know him, you're after doing 13 hours with him, mm. you know, you're after doing a theory test, then you go out and you do like an official test with him, if he sees right, I know you're confident on the road. I'm after been so many hours out on the road with you. Yeah, fair Here you enough. go. There's your test. There's mm. your full life. But do you, do you remember, Sharon, when we were all kids and we used to go out to Bray as kids uh, and yeah. you'd go on the, the dodgems, uh, as they're called, or bumper cars, as they're called. <laughs> yeah. But do you remember, there was always, and it was always very clear when you got into the bumper car, the man would put the token in the front of the car for you and there would be a big arrow on the side of the wall and the man would say to you before the buzzer goes Follow off. Follow the direction of the arrow. All cars yeah. go in the wonder. And there was always these two people in the bumper cars that didn't that go. the so but go the opposite way. And you yeah. always thought to yourself, I don't want to be on the road beside you in 20 years' time. You yeah. thought that as a kid, did you? <laughs> did you no, really? No, did you actually <laughs> thought that? I don't want to be on the road with them. No, I, no, but wasn't it? I just see you. What, as a, as a child? Yeah, a little what? rambunctious little brat. I don't want to be on the road with them when yes, I get Yes, Satan, I was shaming people in the Dodgers. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst thing that ever happened to Bray, by the way. Can I just say of the Dodgers? Can I just say there's two yep. things that happened to Bray that caused its downfall. Bray is a kip now. Because of that, they got rid of the dodgems. Yes, yes. Who, why, why was there not uproar? Adrian, you're a Bray man. When you drive into Bray, there's a sign up that says the home of Adrian Kennedy. Oh, does it? Oh, no, sorry, I haven't lived there for a couple of years. Oh, sorry, sprayed over. So yeah, no, right. but what I'm saying is, you were from Bray. Why did Bray people not kick up when the dodgems? Because there just wasn't enough demand. Basically, it wasn't making enough money. Jesus, you find me one person who doesn't like dodgems. Yeah, everybody likes them, but pe not enough people were going. I to I was them. out there every second week. No, no, shaming people who weren't going in the right direction. Shame. And sorry, the second thing that they got rid of out of Bray that they never should should have got rid of, Adrian, candy floss. Can't get it out of Bray anymore. Brought my young fella out there last week. Do you think you could get candy floss? It's like 100% sugar, can I just say? I don't give a sugar what it is. Um, James, uh, why do 20% of people not bother their arse turning up for their driving test? Because they're just too goddamn lazy. You don't know what... No, you don't know what they... Adrian, they are, you tell listen, Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, right? My brother has spent for his test, his full license, 10 times, and has failed 10 times. Really? I passed mine on my first time round. They're just lazy. Lazy and yeah, as in they're not... Lazy and bad habits, and you just don't care. Right, la exactly lazy the as in they just don't point. bother their arse trying to learn how to drive properly. Exactly, yeah. The but neck, the the neck of you, James. Adrian, say it to him. What? The I neck mean, of him. No, yeah, you agree with him. Oh. Yeah, I'm hardly going to say that to him if I don't. Yeah, but I ask why 20% of people don't turn up for their driving test. And, and you're rabbiting on about dog groomers and all this. <laughs> the absolute neck of you. You don't know what people have done. I don't care. There's something I noticed. I was driving where I can't even remember where I was driving, right? But the um, one, you know, on one of your many holidays, yes. On yes. The, uh, <laughs> you know the the barrier in between the two sides of the carriageway. Yeah, it was higher than the level of your window, right? So you couldn't see over to the other carriageway, and unbeknownst to myself, there was a huge crash on the other side of the carriageway. But my side of the carriageway was flying along because people couldn't see the bloody crash. Yeah, James, quick yeah, question. That's where it should be. James, quick be, question yeah. for you. Um, would yeah. you do, would you like to see the Dodgems brought back to Bray? Uh, yeah. Well, why'd you go air? Uh, yeah, it's a, no, no. There should be no air. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I haven't been out. I haven't been out in Bray in a while, actually. But yeah, no, we would like to see them back. To Wasn't Bray, yeah. it? Dodgems were just the but people weren't going to it. <laughs> if they were making a fortune out there, they'd have never closed it. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, simple. Now, let's go back to the uh, Ant McPartland uh, thing. Yesterday, uh, in court, he was fined €100,000, well, £86,000, um, and he was also uh, given a 20-month driving ban. Peter, you're on 98FM. How are you, Peter? I'm not too bad, Jay. Thanks. Now, uh, Peter, um, what do you think of, of what happened I do, yesterday? I, first of all, I, I don't condone drink driving. No. I think it's an absolute disgrace. However, I... I think it's a disgrace the amount he got fined. To be honest, just because of, just because of his status. No, it's the uh, <laughs> from what we understand, one of the biggest uh, fines for drink driving ever handed down by a UK court. Uh, uh, was the judge making a name for himself? Was he? Um, yeah, I think I think that's more what it is. Him making a name for himself, well, no, trying to make try hold on, Jeremy, just trying to make an example for you know out of him by saying, "Okay, you're in the public eye. Should we slap a hundred grand on you?" I don't think that's right at all. No, I think in UK law, now I'm open to correction here, but I think in UK law, a judge... You can judge, have an unlimited fine. No, but not only that, I think you can link the fine to a person's salary. Uh, so no, in, in UK law, the, you can have an unlimited fine. My understanding yeah. is in Irish it's, law, the maximum fine is five grand, as far as I know. Grand. Absolutely. But in saying that, I still, you know, I still think it's a bit harsh. Look, I, look, I get it. Right, the man, the man is broken. By the way, Jeremy, yeah. God help you if you ever go, have, have a bad time in your life, mate. Peter, you know, I have. You, 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 no, but like, if you're serious, like, this man suffers with an addiction. Sorry, Peter, I've, I've hit rock bottom before. Yes, I have. Well, but have, you, have you hit rock bottom where you've, you've actually, like, look at him? And sorry, the only, peop- the only people who can talk about stuff are people who've hit rock bottom and yeah, can only see that. Yeah, I've that myself. Yeah, we, we've all there. hit rock bottom. Well, not, not everybody. Is here. Have you hit rock bottom before, Adrian? Yes, yeah. I have, yeah. Yeah, so have I. So... But the, the, like, this, this man's rock bottom is, 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 is tearing him apart. You, you're, you're a bit stronger. Yeah, you, you you might have a different feeling if you were in the car in front of him with your child in the back seat of the car. Listen, I, I as I said, I don't condone that. And nobody, and nobody, and bit, Jeremy, it, not for one second am I condo- Yeah, not not for one second am I condoning it either. Uh, but I accept that people make mistakes. Make mistakes. The guy, I, I'm going to play it again because uh, m- many of you may not have heard heard this. This is what Aunt McPartland said outside court yesterday. I just want to say I'm truly sorry for what happened. Um, Higher standards are expected of me. I expect them of myself. I let myself down. I let a lot of people down. For that, I'm truly sorry. I'd like to apologise to everybody involved in the crash. And I'm just thank- thankful nobody was seriously hurt. Thank you very much. I have to say, my heart breaks every time I hear that. Okay, he was it, never... It genuinely you... does. And can I tell you another thing? Yeah. He didn't take the chicken's way out, which a lot of celebrities would have done, of sending his solicitor out to, to give a statement yeah. on his behalf. He stood there in front of hundreds of journalists and made that statement. I think that took balls. I think it, it took take, real yeah, balls. Took well, balls. Okay, first yeah. of all, lads, this man is a trained uh, presenter, so... Yeah, that's not got to do with that. Hold on, there's a trained presenter, and then there's there's... there's you know, well, no, 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 hang on, he's, he's, tra- you know. he's trained to stand in front of millions of people every week presenting. There's so a slight it's, difference when you're being no. publicly humiliated and like second, that. And secondly, Peter, he was never going to stand outside the court looking all happy, going, ah, yeah, I got a fine, but, you know, uh, well, it's, obviously all, he wasn't. it's all grand. So that was all. No, but he could have sent his... Nobody's saying that. Nobody's he could have sent his happy. solicitor out to read a prepared statement exactly. on his behalf, which is what most of them would do. He didn't. He had the balls to get out and face the cameras himself. whoop de do. Yeah, you, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, Anne, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Anne. How are you? How are you doing? Good, Hi, Anne. Anne. What do you want to say? Um, well, I don't think the money has anything to do with it at all because, I mean, money is nothing to, to Ant and Dec. Like, well, you know, they are very well. And I love both of them. I die. I'm a Dec fan more than an Ant, but that has nothing to do with it. I think he probably should have got community service. Um, I don't know. I, I just think if he was seen to be... I, I, personally with me, I think it might... I've made people who think he should have, you know, he should should have got the books on him, that he's doing something. I mean, I know people, now I'm talking about people in Ireland, not in England, I, I know they're, they're very strict, but I know people here who got banned and the book thrown to them for a hell of a lot less. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, God forbid, if, if, if there had been a death, I know there wasn't, and people are saying, oh, there wasn't, but there could have easily been. There could have been, yes. You yeah, know, there's no I mean, denying that. And the fact, the, the race of the people is, is, is nothing. I mean, it, it's terrible what's happening, people abusing them. But, you know, he has, he's, he's 41, he's not a teenager anymore. And I sometimes think, I love Anton Deck and I like, they, they've never, it's like as if they've never grown up half the time. And they, they, they're, they're brilliant at what they do. But 
you know, he, he has his demons. We all have demons. I have demons with loads of other things. Thankfully, it's not drinking. Yeah, you, 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 can, look, like you can look at a person now walking down the street and you don't know what's going on of in their life. Of course they yeah. don't, but they yeah. don't know what's going on in my life exactly. either. But what I'm saying is you can't use your demons. I mean, Alex Higgins had demons. Yep. George Best had demons. We know loads of people. And we were who all had uh, yes, but we were all able to be empathetic towards those people. I wasn't empathetic. I've lived with um, people who have drink problems, and I, 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 unfortunately, I, I, I've lived with people who have put up problems. And yet, the, the fact is, you give them, you can give them an awful lot of love and attention and leeway at that. But sometimes you have to have tough love as well, because nobody can help them except themselves. Do you know what I mean? You cannot force anybody to give up heroin or drink or anything at all. You have to do it yourself. I mean, my voice is chocolate. And for me to give up chocolate or to have something like that is terrible. But people say that's ridiculous. I know it's not as bad as that. But still, people who have an addiction to anything... It's only themselves can do it, and Ant is the only person. Who and can, do it can I? Say, uh, he is d- dealing with it. He is. But he uh, that he does. He's back you in rehab. He was, in, he was in rehab last year. He got out, tried yeah. to get his life. And I, uh, but I remember seeing him on the television saying that guy's not himself yet. I no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't been himself. I think. For, and then his, for a then while, his yeah. and then his marriage yeah. broke down. Oh, yeah. gee, oh cry me a river. She, She's saying, you now she's saying, uh, uh, I've heard people, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know the girl, I know they've been, they've known each other all their lives, but I don't think she particularly wants to split. Oh, really? Well, I don't know the, the background, no, but anyway. The, so, told, you know? Okay, you so think I that... I don't it, think it's, like, I wouldn't blame her now, it could be mutual, I don't know, and of course the fact now that the ex-wife is pregnant and... They, I, I think they always would have loved to have children. Mm. You know, he, him to have children. Who knows? Who knows? But, um, I mean, De- I, I think Deck is doing well too. I'm not saying I want Deck to do everything on his own either. I'd love to see the two of them back together. But they, uh, they, he has to go on. He can't wait for and to pull his socks up as such. Do no, you know and, what and, I mean? and all, all I, the only point that I'm trying to make I is, is, sorry is for just, him now. I, did I feel honestly, sorry. my heart I was bro- pitiful, it was pitiful. I, yeah. My heart broke for the guy when I saw him yesterday. It really did, honestly. And, and that's just as a human being. And I have a question to ask you slightly different. Have you ever been in a bumper car? I have, and I did miss the Dodgems actually because we used to go to break fairly regularly. Well, wait till but, you, um, wait, wait till I you have. I think all out that end, or nearly has gone the same as well. Well, wait till you have a listen to this message that was just posted on our Facebook page. I'd love to talk to this person or someone else in a similar position. Adrian, it says, uh, what's his name there? Sorry, Gareth is his name. He says, lads. I've never been on a bumper car. What? I think it's in a bumper car, is it? Or well, on a I don't bumper car. It, it is, yeah, even touching it. Lads, I've never been on a bumper car and I'm 32 now. How do I change this? Please, I don't know. Is, it, is, it, is it a generation? Is, it, is there anybody else who's never been in a bumper car? I'd love to hear from you. Like Gareth, age 32. How did he get to 32 years of age? And never get into a bumper well, car. I mean, they're gone from Bray, what, about 20 years? Yeah, 15 anyway, yeah. M- maybe yeah. more. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, somebody just texted in a, a couple of minutes ago, a car park is making more money than the bumper cars were. Go figure. That's why they're... That's what it is now. Yeah, we'd love to hear from somebody who has never, ever been in a Dodgem or a bumper car uh, ever... Um, because Gareth is after getting to 32 years of age and he's never been in one and he wants to know how he can change this are there bumper cars anywhere in Ireland now? we'll, we'll try and find out if you know where they are let us know um, one last uh, call on the Ant McPartland thing uh, Stephen you're on 98FM hi you Stephen I'm good today Adrian. No, um, go on I think uh, people should give Ant McPartland a bit of a break to be honest uh, it's all right was probably going to be defined by this and he may never walk again I don't think I don't think he won't work again. I, I I don't doubt that for a second. I I would imagine if he gets his act together, he goes through his rehab and whatever, he'd probably be back on the telly by November. But um, uh, I don't know. Even the way social media is nowadays, I don't know. I don't know. The pitchfork brigade might get at him. Well, yeah, but M- I, uh, Michael, I, I Michael Barrymore never came back. I did. I was re. Uh, Michael Barrymore was involved in a scandal around somebody's death. It was slightly different now. In fairness, okay. Um, but sorry, what I was about to say. Uh, I read an awful lot of the commentary on social media yesterday and the majority of the commentary that I read were supporting the guy. So, um, well, if, if you're talking about public opinion, he, I think he'd be back, but sure, we'll have to wait I know, he doesn't deserve to lose everything. Jesus, I'm not, I'm not that heartless, but I'm just saying perspective. He's after paying out a fine of uh, half a week's wages. That'd be the equivalent, Adrian, of you getting a fine of uh, 20 grand. Just saying, perspective. Simon, your girlfriend is... 
afraid of bumpers. Yeah, she is. Well, she's she's okay because from what we believe, you cannot find a bumper car in Ireland. Um, so she's never going to come across them. I know there oh, are some in Tremor. Yeah, some in Tremor. There's some in no Cork Town. Really? Yeah, in Cork Town, they still have them. Um, and in fact, a few places have been suggested. None around the Greater Dublin area that we know of. Um, no. But anyway, say so what? What's her fear? Well, just uh, you know the way people bump into you and all that. <laughs> This is kind of the, the aim of the game, Well, really, it's not actually. It? The aim yeah. of the game is to avoid. That's what they're called, dodgems. Yeah, it? but obviously you're dodging them. Some of them might hit you. Yeah. I mean, the f- I tell you what I used to be afraid of. That bloody seatbelt that you had to put around you. Oh, I, it was terrifying. I yeah. was always terrified of that seatbelt. Yeah, choke you. Yeah. It's choking hazard. Um, and what, what age is this woman, Simon, that you're going out with? Uh, she's... 22. 22, so she's she's a she's a young woman, and she is literally terrified of bumper cars. Yeah, she she was on them last year with me, and uh, she didn't like them at all. And why did you ram her? Well, I went into other people. <laughs> no, but you didn't ram her. No, no. Okay, but that's a decent boyfriend, in fairness. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so, um, and well, did someone hit her really hard? Well, well, she was in the car with me. Why did you not? That's a bit weird. Okay, what? Not getting your own car. Two adults in a car together in a bumper car. Where'd you put your legs? There's no room for two adults in one bumper car. It's ridiculous. Actually, there's another thing about the bumper car that it always annoyed me. If you have long legs, the pedal was in the middle. <laughs> What's the pedal in the middle for? <laughs> yeah. It has to be one side or the other. Where were these bumper cars, Simon? Tremor. Tr- now, um, I remember going to the ones in Tremor when I was a kid, and the one thing I remember about them is they were very slow. You know bumper cars that are very slow, Adrian? Yeah. You know, you put the, you're put you putting the pedal down. And there's nothing. And it's going nowhere. nowhere. It's, yeah, going it's like your car, actually. It's, it's yeah. like, it is like, my, well, the car I owned previously. So she'll never go in another bumper car again? No. Oh, my God. So stay away from Tremor. Where else, Adrian? Court Town. Uh, Court Town Amusement Park has them. And... Um, no, there's nowhere in Dublin that has them. I'm telling no, you. No, there is no bumpers. If in Dublin, you are no. a businessman out there who is looking for a surefire hit on your hands, okay. Why don't you do it yourself? What? Get really out of here. I haven't got the money to open a bumper car park, but you could open up a place somewhere in the city. Yeah, call yeah. it call it Dodgem City. See what oh, I do? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Dodgem yeah, City, good, yep. and um, put it this way: it would get all the kids uh, off the streets and stop them joyriding cars. M- they do, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you know the Atlanta out in Fingers who's out joining in the cars every night, yeah, yeah. Put him in a bumper car, put manners on him, yeah, and um, it would keep. You know, kids are coming up on their summer holidays now, Adrian. They're bored. They've nothing to do. Ma, I've nothing to do. Ma, hey, you I'm think bumper do. cars is going to sort him out? Do uh, you? Well, it's bumper cars and Bray, um, my childhood. Okay, the only places that we have found that you uh, that there are still bumper cars: Tremor in County Waterford and Court Town in County Wexford. They're That's the only two it. places that we know of that still now permanent bumper cars. Obviously, f- uh, I think Funderland has them when it's there, uh, but Funderland isn't there all year round. No. Um, so permanent bumper cars, we think there's only two in uh, Court Town. Oh, sorry. In- yes, uh, in, in July, Adrian, out in Bray, uh, during the summer fest, they always have a, a big travelling carnival, and they have bumper cars and I know, have great. It's not like the same th- though as a permanent fixture. Do you know what I mean? You have yeah. to. So I have to wait till the summer to go on the bumpers. I know, but I have to say, those summer fests out in Bray, when they have the amusements out on the seafront, they bring along a lovely crowd of people. Lovely bunch of people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you yeah, always, and very successful there. Yeah, but you always get lovely people out there for those. Fun fairs, generally, Adrian, they attract the creme de la creme. <laughs> so what? What did I say? Hello? Now, I'm being told that yes. Betty's Town in County Meath has them all year round. Does That's that- a lie. No. Oh, so according to Katie, no, that's true. What did she say? No, that's true. Yeah, that's what she so said. So what in my did she ear. say? No, that's true. It's true. Yeah, that's what she said. They have them in Betty's Town. Yeah, they have them in Betty's Town. Yeah, in that place, Betty's Town. No, but what's it that called? Down by the sea. What's it called? Where the the water park is? Fantasia. No, Fantasia's not there. Yes, it is. Fantasia's in Drada. So they have them in Betty's Town. So if I go up to Betty's Town now, yeah, is that no? That's that's the horse riding place. Isn't it? There's no bumper cars in Betty's Town. Well, apparently there is. Lies on the show. Oh, yeah, um, Albert Cashley's Extreme Fun Fair and Fantasia. Sorry, there is so, Fantasia in Betty's thanks, Town. Sorry, Adrian. my apologies. Yeah, sorry, um, but yes, there is bumpers in, um, in Betty's Town. So there. And Tremor during the summer as well. They had my whole, my whole misspent youth uh, was down in Tremor on the bumper cars every day. Bumper car after bumper car after bumper car. When was the last time you were in Tremor? That's the one in Waterford, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, Court Town's Wexford. Tremor. When was the last time I was in Tremor? 
about 10 years ago Yeah it's about 15 or 20 years ago That I was there When we go on a day trip Yeah now? let's go Let's go You and me And we bring Casey And pretend Casey is our daughter <laughs> And put her in the bumper cars And there we go In the bumper cars there we go. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, and yeah, bumper cars in, in yeah, so uh, Betty's town, uh, Core town, and Tremor is the only place you'll find permanent bumper cars. Somebody is suggesting. None in Dublin. Somebody is suggesting Doctor Quirky's. Doctor Quirky's does not have bumper cars. No, it doesn't. It no, doesn't. No, 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 it definitely doesn't. Uh, let me see. Is there any more? Uh, Fantasia, Betty's town. Yeah, okay, we got that. Yeah. Um, Core town amusements aren't open all year round. Oh, mm, right. That's that's. Um, They're just for the summer months. Although, would you ever go to Core town in November? I don't think I'll ever go to court town, <laughs> quite honestly. Oh, stop. Um, oh. uh, dear God, me missus from Finglas is at me to text you saying Jezza is talking about Dodgem City should open with bumper cars all year round in the city centre. Yes. We make a fortune ask. Uh, uh, we make a fortune asking me to invest uh, my savings in it. There's, there's there's an investor already. So, uh, but a Finglas man that wants to invest in something. Yeah. So he wants to open. I think this man wants to open uh, 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 bumpers. D- Dodgem City in Fingus, yeah? yeah. Apparently. Well, yeah. as I said, anytime you have a fun fair anywhere in Dublin or those, you know, those rides and stuff, you just get the creme de la creme. You get the nicest, nicest people at those fun fairs, don't you? Adrian? How much is your candy flats? Have you any is your toffee apples? Oh, apparently Base Entertainment Centre in Selbridge has bumper cars all year round. I think people are just people are, people are just texting random stuff. Look, here's another one, Adrian, yeah? Yep. Tesco Sinclair Hall has bumper cars. <laughs> no, it doesn't. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talk. Get you our bumper stickers. 98 FM The sound of the city 98 FM's Dublin Talks Weekdays from 10am With Adrian Kennedy